Today's topic is dogs at Disney World, which has been a, a bit of news recently that has been mixed with, been met with mixed reactions to say the least. But we are going to talk about the policy up until now, what it was before this announcement, what it's going to be now, what to expect at the resorts now that this policy is in effect, and then we'll finally get into a little bit of the controversy and the, the, the negative feedback. First of all, let's talk about how the dog policy has worked up until now. The places where dogs have been allowed before October 15, 2017 were at the pet-friendly campsites at Fort Wilderness. You could book a campsite and then you could request a, you still can, request a pet-friendly loop there. There's also Best Friends Pet Care, which is an on-site uh, pet care center that allows boarding and grooming and dog daycare and things like that. And we'll actually talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. And thirdly, of course, service animals. You will see animals in the parks. And I think this has really increased a lot over the last few years. I think as service animals have become used for a lot more things, they are definitely in the parks. I have been in line for many rides and there were dogs right in line with us. And so you will definitely see dogs in the parks if they are service animals. However, now Disney has announced that dogs are going to be allowed at four more locations at Disney World, and that includes Art of Animation Resort, Port Orleans Riverside, Yacht Club Resort, and the cabins at Fort Wilderness, in addition to the campsites. Now the cabins at Fort, Fort Wilderness will allow them. It is also, Disney is also going to allow dogs on the Magical Express buses as long as they are in a carrier. They are also allowed in minivans as long as they are in a carrier. That way they can get to and from the resort. However, dogs are still not permitted in lots of places, including Disney Springs, the theme parks, monorails, boats, pools, club lounges, dining areas, and fitness centers, unless they are service animals. That's always the caveat with this. Um, but everyone's just pets cannot go into um, a lot of these other areas that I just mentioned. The policies on this are as follows. First of all, you have a maximum of two dogs per room. That's not two cats, that's not hamsters, that's not anything, it's just dogs. There are no limitations on breed or weight that we have been told as of right now. It's just maximum of two dogs per room. The dogs cannot be left alone for more than seven hours. And this is obviously one of the biggest concerns when you say Disney World is allowing dogs is that people may be gone from the room 12 plus hours a day and how are their dogs going to be managed? However, Disney's policy is that they can't be left alone for more than seven hours. If they make noise, you will be called to address it within 30 minutes. So obviously noise is a concern people don't want to be in a room and then have the dog next door barking and keep them keeping them awake but disney says that they will call guests if the dogs are barking um fourth under the dog policy list is that owners must use the do not disturb door hanger if they if the humans are not in the room that way cast members will not enter and uh, be in the room without the owners and as a related note housekeeping will only enter if the human guests are in the room but if you're not you have to have the do not disturb on the door fifth you must have up-to-date vaccinations on your dog disney has the right to ask for them at any point and you need to be able to provide them and lastly, if you're going to be in public areas, they must be leashed at all times. Now let's talk about what to expect at the resorts if you're going to be at one of the resorts that does allow dogs. First, you will have an increased price. There's an extra, and it's not cheap, $50 a night for value and moderate resorts if you bring a pet, and $75 a night at the Deluxe Yacht Club is the only Deluxe. So it's it's a hefty fee, and some people have said, well, it's cheaper to board them, but you know, not everyone wants to board their animals, so this is another option. Secondly, if you are at the resort with your pet, you will receive Pluto's Welcome Kit, which I think is, is adorable. I'd love to see a picture of this. But it will include a mat, bowls, a pet ID tag, disposable bags, puppy pads, dog walking maps, and pl a um, Pluto Do Not Disturb door hanger. So we just talked about how you have to have that on the door if you're going to bring your pet, and that is provided in the Welcome Kit. Third, there will be pet merchandise coming to resort gift shops. As of the time that I'm recording this, it's not quite available, but Disney has said that it is on its way. 
And fourthly, what to expect is that there will be dog specific floors or sections. And this addresses another concern that many people have had that they don't want to stay in a room if, if they are not there with their dog. They don't want to stay in a room where a dog has been. Uh, Disney has said that they will be designating certain floors or sections just for people that bring their dogs to Disney World. And related to that, there are dog relief areas that have been defined at the, these four resorts. At Fort Wilderness, for instance, there is a dog park and two other relief areas. At Yacht Club, there is two near the pool there. And at Riverside and Art of Animation, there are four different dog relief areas, and they are peppered throughout the resort. For instance, at Art of Animation, there is a dog relief area near buildings 2, 5, 6, and 7. And then there are, likewise, there are four at Riverside. Now, I did mention earlier that Best Friends Pet Care has always been an option, and it's, it will continue to be an option, and this would, you know, possibly be a companion service if you are going to use um, have your dog in your hotel room for instance at home we take our dog to doggy daycare all the time just so she can run some of that energy off because you know i work at home and i'm on the computer a lot so she needs something to keep her busy same could be true at disney world you could take your dog to doggy daycare and then go pick up later in the day they also do have boarding if you just want to have them boarded there rather than stay in your room and then you could go visit um, they also have grooming and training and veterinary services available as well. You can look at that information at bestfriendspetcare.com and on the website you can make reservations if you are going to be bringing your dog and know you want to use some of the services at Best Friends Pet Care. Now let's talk about the controversy. Um, I have to tell you that it has been a shocking uh, feedback on this. I have never before deleted a Facebook post because people were being so nasty to each other in the comments until this. It feels like there are lots bigger things in the world going on to be mad about other than dogs. And it's, you know, you can avoid it if it's not your thing. I totally get that. But um, nevertheless, people are mad. I just want to throw out a few points related to that. First is that lots of hotels have been doing this for years. Obviously, it's working. And these are, these are not cheap hotels. We've got Kimptons, Four Seasons, Fairmont Hotels, Mini Marriott's. It has been this way for a very long time, and it's working for them. It's good business. So while people may be upset and have very valid concerns, it seems to work for hotels on some level. So Disney isn't inventing this. They are simply following a trend that has been increasing over the years. In fact, somebody from Hotels.com said this in 2016. They said, Demand is growing year on year with a large proportion of hotels across the globe now not only accommodating for pets, but also advertising this key feature. So it's a huge selling point. Disney knows what they're doing. I know that they have thought through some of the concerns that people have had, but in, in the end, it's a business and it seems to make good business sense for them. Um, if you don't want to be at a hotel with dogs, you can use room requests to try to, if you're going to stay at one of the four resorts that has the has pets, you can request to be somewhere else where the pets are not. Um, you could also obviously book a resort that isn't going to allow pets. So you do have some options. I know that that's not ideal for everyone. For instance, if Yacht Club is your favorite resort and now you have to think about something else, um, then you know, that is inconvenient, but this is the state of things and um, we have to work with what we have. Um, feedback, if you have feedback and you want to let Disney know, please let Disney know. I feel, I feel like a lot of people shoot the messenger. You know, I didn't change this policy. I am not the person to vent to. I am admittedly excited about it because I have a dog that I have always wanted to take to Disney World. And so if I drive, I may, you know, stay in a Disney World hotel and have her with me. However, I also am the mother of a child with severe anxiety. I also am a person who has had allergies. I had allergy shots for every week for 15 years. I get these concerns, but there are a lot of us who like it. And, but if you were one of the people that doesn't, go let Disney know because they're the ones who created the policy and could do something about it if enough people said anything. You can call them, but you can also email them wdw.guest.communications at disneyworld.com and I'm sure that they would love to get feedback from you. So that is the recap of what we know so far about dogs at Disney World Resorts. I do want to have a quick tip of the day before we wrap this up and that is about laminating your touring plans. A 
listener named Brandon emailed this. It says, I was wanting everyone on our trip to have a copy of our daily plan so that I don't feel like I'm having to direct everyone, but I wanted them off of phones for ease. I printed our daily plans on pocket-sized pieces of paper and then laminated them so they'll be sweat and water resistant. You can buy laminators for under $20 and I use it for a lot of other stuff, or you could have them laminated at an office supply store. So this is a great little tip. And I would also add to this that you can get the self-laminating luggage tags. If you don't want to buy a laminator or go to an office supply store, you can get the self-laminating luggage tags, which are self-sealing. You just put the paper in, close it up, and it has a very similar effect. So I appreciate that, Brandon. Thank you so much for sending that in. I think that will wrap up this topic. Thank you so much for join, joining. Please sure to hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.